Good day. Welcome to another session of Org Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to look at marginal and absorption costing. And then we are going to understand the computation of profits under these two methods. We are also going to look at how to value closing stocks in the marginal costing system and then the absorption costing system as well, which is the key difference between the two approaches. And then also we are going to learn how to reconcile the profit from the marginal costing uh, approach and then also the absorption costing. Okay, so that is what we are going to do. I don't want to waste too much time with this topic as I always do because, uh, you know, most of the books and other materials that you have read, some of them have been a little complex and not too straightforward in dealing with some of these issues. So before you get to the bottom line or the main uh, fact or the important point of the topic, you would have been confused. So I don't want to waste too much time with theoretical aspects, but I just want to explain the concepts to you. Now, over here, what you are going to do is that you will be asked to calculate profits using these two methods. We have the marginal costing approach and then we have the absor absorption costing approach. The marginal costing approach is a system that does not include fixed production costs in the valuation of closing stock. I repeat, the absorption costing, uh, sorry, the marginal costing, which is also called the variable costing. Marginal costing is also called variable costing. And I'm saying that under the marginal costing system, the key characteristic is that fixed production overheads are not included in the valuation of closing stock or closing inventory. And so when we are valuing our closing inventory in, for the purpose of profit calculation, we do not include fixed production overheads. We know that for production cost of every product, it is your prime cost, which is made up of your direct material cost, your direct uh, labor cost, your direct expenses, making up your prime cost. Okay. And then there is factory overheads. Now, these factory overheads that we are talking about are made up of fixed factory overheads and then variable factory overheads. So there are times where you see that the factory overheads that are included in the calculation of production cost is fixed. You have fixed factory overheads and then we have the variable. But what we are saying is that when we add the two, we are going to have the total production cost. So it means that production cost is made up of your prime cost and factory overheads, as we have already stated. Now, if production cost is made up of prime cost and factory overheads, then this is it. Absorption costing is the full costing approach. They do not discriminate. But when it comes to the marginal costing, marginal costing is saying that I will not include the fixed production cost in the valuation of my closing inventory for the purpose of profit calculation. So you see direct material cost, direct labor cost, direct expenses. All the elements of the prime cost are assumed to be variable. And that is how it is. And so direct material cost is a variable cost in, in, in its nature. Direct labor cost is a variable cost and direct expense is also a variable cost. All these ones, they vary directly with the units produced. And that is why prime cost in, in nature are variable costs. When it comes to factory overheads, that is where we have a fixed cost component. So the first time a fixed cost component is setting in in the production cost is in the factory overheads. And that is where we have fixed factory overheads and then we can have variable factory overheads. Now, this is the rule. The rule is that when you are calculating profits under the absorption costing, you are free to include both fixed and variable costs in your production cost calculation which is eventually going to be used in evaluation of the closing stock. But if you are using the marginal, or the, look at the name, variable costing, I told you the name, another name for marginal is variable costing. So as the name suggests, it's variable. So we exclude the fixed production overheads in the valuation of closing stock. Okay, I'm not saying in the calculation of production cost. Well, we are going to use that to calculate a variable cost of production because this is total cost of production. The moment you take out your face cost, whatever you will be left with will not be your total production cost, but it will be your only the variable component of the production cost. So what we are trying to say is that every fixed cost component will be excluded 
from the calculation of the production cost for the purpose of valuation of closing inventory and i keep on hammering on the valuation of closing inventory because that is the key focus of what we are going to do the valuation of closing inventory okay so we are going to exclude the first cost from the valuation of closing inventory and then when we come to absorption costing i told you absorption costing is also called full costing so another name for the absorption costing is called full costing It's called full constant and that means that the name full means that we include both fixed and variable costs to get the production cost that will guide us in the valuation of our closing inventory and that is what we are going to do now and so i'm going to give you the format for calculating profit under each of these two methods we are going to learn that simultaneously but before i do that i want you to understand something with the concept of the marginal costing so what I'm trying to explain is that with the marginal costing approach, we factor only the variable cost. Now, in calculating profit from our study in um, the cost volume profit analysis, we know that total sales minus variable cost is going to give us contribution or total contribution and not profit. But if it is sales minus total cost, that gives us profit. Okay, so we are going to look at that. And then I'm going to use this to give you the difference between the marginal costing and the absorption costing profit statement. Okay, so I like I told you, I don't want to waste your time. But I want to go straight forward and give you how to calculate the profits under each of the methods so that is the format we are going to look at so we are going to see statement of profits into brackets marginal costing so i'm going to use the marginal costing and then i'm also going to use the absorption costing so let me just divide the page and also call this one statement of profit and absorption into brackets absorption costing So let me show my currency signs. Let's assume I'm working in dollars. Okay. All right, so this profit statement that we are going to prepare is almost the same as the profit statement that we know from the trading profit or loss account or the income statement. So we are going to begin with our sales. So let me begin with the absorption costing and then I will go back to the marginal costing. So we bring our sales, okay? And once we bring our sales, the next thing is to less the cost of sales. Over here, hardly will you see any returns on sales. So we less cost of sales, as we have been doing from the income statement. So we take out the cost of sales. And we all know that with the cost of sales, it is your opening inventory or your opening stock, plus your net purchases in a case of a trading business that are into buying and selling but over here we are talking about a company that is manufacturing their own goods they are producing their own goods that is why we are even talking about cost of production in the first place okay if it was about selling and buying and selling we are not going to talk about cost of production over here but we have spoken about cost of purchase but over here the idea between the marginal and the absorption cost is even about how to ascertain production cost it tells you that the organization in question will definitely be about an, a company that is producing their own goods okay and we have learned from manufacturing accounts in financial accounting that when the company is manufacturing their own goods instead of the next purchases that will be added to the opening inventory we rather add the cost of production so if there is any opening inventory we add the production cost okay and so that is exactly what we are going to do to get our cost of sales so we are going to begin with the opening inventory or the opening stock. Um, let me let me just shift this to create a room. I want to explain something to you for a third currency sign. Because we are supposed to work the cost of sales on the second currency sign. So the opening inventory will come. Then you add your cost of production or production cost. 
this is full custom okay so everything is included so once you add your production cost to opening inventory then you have cost of goods available for sale before you take out the closing inventory so right after you add that you have cost of goods available for sale then you can take out your closing inventory this is what we know as a matter of fact if it was an organization that are into buying and selling instead of the cost of production you would have seen net purchases okay but because they are into production production cost will replace production cost will replace the net purchases to get the cost of goods available for sale now this is it what i want you to understand is that this production cost that i have written it like that may not be given to you directly in the question you'll be giving the components of the production cost and you are supposed to calculate your own production cost okay so i'm going to wipe it off again and then i'm going to begin with the component of production cost and that is what i'm trying to say so just watch what i'm saying once you bring your opening inventory then you calculate for your production cost by starting with your direct material cost and then let's create a first currency sign to calculate for the production cost so that the final production cost will be brought to add up to the opening stock so then you add your direct labor cost i've told you that these ones are all variable costs but anyway we are dealing with absorption costing so that is what we all know so let us deal with that first from there then i will explain the marginal which is quite different from what we know then we are also going to if there is any direct expense we are going to bring that usually there is not then let's talk about the overheads okay because we know that we add the factory overheads to the prime cost now let me also make note of something we have two types of the overheads we have the factory overheads and the non-factory overheads the non-factory overheads are the selling overheads distribution overheads administrative overhead and the likes those ones are non-factory they are not incurred at the factory that is why we call them non-factory or non-production overheads and those overheads will not be part of production cost so that is why i spoke only of the factory overheads but the factory overheads are overheads that are incurred in the factory and it is the factory overheads that we still have fixed components and the variable components just like the non-factory overheads we are also going to get fixed components and variable components sometimes okay so we are talking about fixed and variable factory overheads overheads that are incurred in the factory and it is the factory overheads that is going to be added to the production cost remember that i told you that after opening inventory we are adding a production cost but we are now calculating for our own production cost in here and so direct labor let's say we have factory overheads but i'm not going to write the factory overheads straightforward i'm just going to separate them into variable factory overheads or production overheads in this case factory overheads means production overheads and then we are also going to have fixed factory overheads now when we add one two three four the prime cost and then the factory overhead component then we can bring our production cost to the right to be added to the opening inventory so once we add the production cost to opening inventory that is where we have our cost of goods available for sale then we take out the closing inventory or closing stock now with a closing inventory over here i'm just going to show you how it's going to be treated but when we are solving a question i'm going to show you the valuation of closing inventory that is a technical area because the way we are going to value closing inventory with the absorption costing will be different from the way we do that and the marginal costing and that is what we should understand so you just take out your closing inventory which has been valued using the absorption costing valuation approach and after taking out your closing inventory you can get your cost of sales this is the cost of sales that you were looking for you now gotten it so you take out the cost of sales and your final figure becomes your gross profits we know all these things from the income statements in financial accounting the only thing that has changed is that instead of adding purchases we just calculated the cost of production but everything looks the same with our knowledge in financial accounting and i'm sure that is very consistent with what we know in financial accounting okay 
having gotten our gross profit, the next thing that we have to do is to now take out, if it was in the case of the income statement, we see less expenses. Over here, it's about less than non-factory overheads. Those are the expenses we are talking about. So we take out our non-factory overheads. Or, and those ones are the administrative and general overheads. Then we can also have the selling and distribution overheads. There are times that selling overheads will be different from distribution overheads. So you show them accordingly. So there could be other non-factory overheads. So they have just been grouped into administrative and general and then selling and distribution. So once we find our non-factory overheads, we take that out of the gross profit. And then the final figure becomes our net profit. So this is how to arrive at your net profit from the absorption constant technique. This is very simple. Now, let me also draw your attention to something. You see, with a non-factory overhead, there could be variable component and then fixed component, I told you. So, just as the factory overheads, we have variable factory overheads and fixed factory overheads. Factory overheads in this case is the same as production overheads for those who care to know. So the administrative and general overheads, we are also going to have a variable component and a fixed component sometimes. And then the selling and distribution too, we, are going, we may have a variable and a fixed, depending on the situation. But selling are usually variable, except it is mentioned. Some of the administrative expenses are usually fixed, except the question mentions. So let's say this is what we should understand for now. I am sure that the absorption cost and profit statement it's not something that is too difficult to understand. It is just as what we know from the income statement. It's just that purchases is being replaced by the calculation of cost of production. Every other thing looks the same. Okay. So now let us also focus now on the marginal cost. And that is where there is going to be a change. And so you watch. When you come to the marginal cost, the marginal cost is quite different. So let's begin with the same approach. We have our sales figure here, and then we take our cost of sales. Now, over here, we took out the full cost of sales. But when we come to the marginal cost, we are not going to take out the total cost of sales, only the variable component, remember? So you can say less variable cost of sales or less marginal cost of sales. So instead of taking out the full cost of sales, we less variable or variable cost of sales. So let's specify that the cost of sales we are dealing with here is variable. So we can start with our opening inventory. Just like we started with the absorption cost. And then we are also going to add our production cost. But over here, just as we also split the production cost into components, we are going to split them into components taking into consideration the fixed and variable components. So, in other words, we are going to skip the fixed. The fixed factory overheads will not have a place. So let's look at how it's going to be. We are going to write the direct material cost, just as we did in the absorption cost. So we are using the two as a comparative way of understanding. Then we are also going to have our direct labor, if there is. Okay. Then there could be variable overheads. So variable factory or production overheads will come and that will be all we are no more going to add the fixed factory overheads because marginal costing is interested in taking out all variable costs from the sales to arrive at contribution they are not interested in gross profits over here we are interested in getting the contribution and to get the contribution we need to take out variable costs from sales so there is no need to include fixed uh, factory overheads in the calculation of your cost of production. As a matter of fact, that is why we call it the marginal cost of sales. And so what we are going to do is that we add it over here and then get it here so that we are going to have our cost of goods available for sale according to the marginal. Then we can now take out our closing inventory. So when you are subtracting the closing inventory here, the closing inventory you are going to subtract here is a closing inventory that has been valued based on the marginal costing valuation, which I'm going to teach you 
in the question we are the first question we are going to solve is going to be a very simple one though it's not that simple but we are going to learn how to value the closing stock that is in the next video that is coming and then when we are done we are going to talk about over and under absorption as the last aspect and then we can take a question on that and conclude with margin and absorption question so take out the closing stock which has been valued based on the cost of production that we have got in here so it means that this closing inventory will be valued based on this variable cost of production whereas the closing inventory in the absorption cost is valued based on the cost of production including the fixed factory overheads but this is excluding the fixed factory overheads and i'm going to show you the valuation so after you have taken out your closing inventory then you have your marginal cost of sales okay so now let me say this the best thing is that you take you bring it here subtract just like we did to get the contribution however when it comes to the aspect of contribution or the, the the concept of contribution it is not only production variable cost that is taken out of sales it is total variable cost and when we talk about total variable cost we shouldn't focus only on the production variable cost because i told you that there could be some variable cost also in the non-factory so after getting your variable cost of sales you don't take that alone from the sales you need to come and look at the non-factory overhead to see if some of them have a variable component and then you add the variable component and then subtract all of them together to get total contribution because to get a contribution is both your variable cost of sales and the variable cost that is coming from the non-factory overheads you add both of them before so what you some people may decide to do is that they will still bring this here in brackets come and look for this and come and subtract that as well to get a contribution or we bring it down look for the non-variable uh, sorry bring it down like this look for the non-factory overheads that are variable add them before we subtract so let us try that so when we get our variable cost of sales we can instead of writing it to the right to subtract from sales we can decide to bring it down and then we say add other variable costs and these other variable costs are costs that are coming from the non-factory overhead side okay so if you have more than one you can list them and then add them you can have non-factory over uh, sorry a uh, selling and distribution costs that are variable in fact you can get a question that will tell you that 60 per, maybe 60 percent of selling costs are fixed 40 percent are variable those kind of dynamics could be given to help you to calculate these kind of things and so what you are going to do is that you add other variable costs and when you add all those other variable costs for example let me say it could be a uh, fixed let me be specific so you can have the other variable cost could be variable selling cost selling and distribution cost and then you can also have variable administrative expense okay so let's assume these are other variable costs we have split the variable from the fixed over here we combine them but now we are splitting so when we add other variable costs to the marginal cost of sales then we have our total variable cost which we are going to shift to the right okay so we bring the total variable cost and the moment we take out total variable cost from the sales the figure we have is called contribution because we know that sales minus total variable cost is total contribution. So instead of saying gross profit, you say contribution under the marginal costing approach. I hope you are getting what I'm explaining. If you are not getting this, please rewind the video and then listen again. All right. So now that we have gotten our contribution, to get the net profit, we need to now take out our fixed cost because there is a fixed factory overhead that we didn't bring here we have to now bring it down and there are some fixed components of the non-factory overheads that also has to be subtracted so now we don't say take out your non-factory overheads but you rather say less your fixed cost so after getting your contribution we less fixed cost and we know we all know that contribution minus fixed cost should give us a profit so we take out your fixed cost and then the first fixed cost you should bear in mind and remember to bring is your fixed 
production cost or your fixed factory cost, factory overhead. And this fixed factory overhead is what was used in calculating the cost of production under the absorption costing, but was rejected in calculation of the production cost under the marginal costing. So that will also now come. Okay, so it doesn't mean we are taking it out forever. It will still be subtracted, but it's going to come down. And then these two, the administrative and general overheads and the selling and distribution tool, you look for the fixed components of them and bring it. So you have fixed administration and selling costs. And then you can also have fixed selling and distribution. So administration and general expenses, sorry. And then fixed selling and distribution expenses or overheads will come. So now that you have taken out all your variable costs to get a contribution, you now take out all your fixed costs to get the net profit. So what we are trying to say is that marginal costing takes out all variable costs in the question that you are going to get. Every cost in the factory or the company that is variable will be subtracted to get a contribution. Then every first cost will now be taken out. And then once we have our total first cost and we take it off, we are going to arrive at a net profit for the marginal cost. And now that we have a net profit for the marginal costing, then this is what I have to tell you. The net profit for the absorption costing and the net profit for the marginal costing will not be the same. They will be different. Even though you are going to use the same information to prepare this, they will be different. But the question is, why is it that what we are supposed to add, we added, what we are supposed to subtract, we subtracted everything regardless of the positioning. Why should the profit be different? The profit will be different because of the valuation of closing stock or closing inventory. And that is what I need to hammer on in the part two of this video. I'm going to take a question and I'm going to solve the question with you. And then we are going to look at how to value the closing stock using the two methods. And even we are also going to be required to reconcile the profits. And so after calculating and getting the two profits, we are going to reconcile these two profits in another statement. And that is going to show us how these profits became different and it's going to be from the way the closing stock was valued okay so that is it for now so after we have understood from that question and then maybe there will be a third video where there should be a third video where we are going to talk about over and under absorption and take another complex question solve them together and then i'm sure that we'll be okay from there with marginal and absorption question Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of part one of our lesson on marginal and absorption costing. In the part two of this video, we are going to solve a question and then we are going to understand how to do the valuation and also the reconciliation of the profit. Remember to subscribe to this channel, share this video and let others also have a benefit. Let's grow together. Let's be successful together. Until we meet again another time, it's bye for now.